Bless you, Shata. Miss King, God bless you. Miss William, God bless you. Anthony Battle, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you, Whitney. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Miss Battle, God bless you. Hallelujah. Miss Burt, God bless you. Shall like an invite. Hallelujah. Share like and invite. God bless you, Tequay. Hallelujah. God bless you, Miss Kitchens. God bless you, Miss Riley. Share like and invite. God bless you, Miss Summer. Somerville. Shannon, God bless you. Share like and invite. DC. Mr. DC. Mr. DC. God bless you. Claire, Miss West, God bless you. Shonda Hunt, Huff, God bless you. Share like and invite. Angela Williams, God bless you. Share like and invite. Hallelujah. God is amazing, family. Hallelujah. God can do everything but fail. Hallelujah. Miss Smith, God bless you. Uh, Marie Williams, God bless you. Share like and invite. T. Ray, God bless you. Let me get, let me get some people on here. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Sister King, how's the sound? Sister Whitney, how's the sound? Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Rita Moore, God bless you. Shantae Richards, God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. It ain't too loud, Whitney. Hallelujah. Tracy Lane, God bless you. Hallelujah. Tracy Lane. Dwayne Carter, that's my brother from another mother. God bless you, Dwayne. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Hallelujah. Saul, God bless you. Hallelujah. Lisa Ramsey, God bless you. That's my auntie. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Y'all share like an invite. Hallelujah. Amy Cobbs, God bless you. Katrina Wells, God bless you. Share like and invite. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why you coming in? Share like and invite. This is Shine Box of Chocolate Live. Expect the unexpected. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Hallelujah. You can do the city and state, or you can do, just do the state, whatever you feel comfortable with. Hallelujah. Miss H Ms. Hudson, God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you tonight about holding on a little while longer. Hallelujah. I want to talk to some of you tonight about holding on a little while longer. Hallelujah. Your change is going to come. Hallelujah. Your change is going to come. Hallelujah. Shy. God bless you, Shy. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you, Uncle Richard. Uncle Richard down there in Florida. He's about to live down there, ain't you, Uncle Richard? Every time, 
<laughs> Every time you are off a rich, you, you flood a bound. 75, 95 or a back row, one or something. Hallelujah. Miss Lou, God bless you. Share like and invite. This is Shine Box of Chocolate Live. Expect the unexpected. We give glory to God. We honor God tonight for each and every one of you. For what God is doing and what he's getting ready to do. Hallelujah. In your life. Glory be to the Lamb of God. God is amazing. God can do everything. Hallelujah. He got Florida. Miss Cheekman. God bless you. We got Florida. We got Thompson. We got Augusta. We got Orlando. Hallelujah. T Town Bound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Share, like, and invite. Those of you that have not already, I'm not going to be before you no long, no long time. We just moved by the Spirit, but God wanted me to talk to a lot of people tonight about holding on a little while longer. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. We got Grow Town. Those of you who haven't, share, like, and invite. Someone needs to hear this. Someone is on your timeline. It's going through. Hallelujah. Invite somebody. Let somebody know we on. Hallelujah. Fred. Glory be to the Lamb of God. God bless you, Fred. Hallelujah. I'm praying for you. Hallelujah. It's like the Lord want to do something with you. But the Lord is pulling you out of the place that you're in. God bless you, Miss Hart, Miss Angela Wallace. That's Monty. God bless you. Hallelujah. Arika, God bless you. Hallelujah. Share like an invite. It's a lie. Hallelujah. Shine box of chocolate live. Expect the unexpected. Hallelujah. We never know what God is going to do. But we do know one thing. He won't fail us now. Hallelujah. Veronica Divine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying for Veronica. Hallelujah. Veronica Divine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for her. Hallelujah. We're going to touch and agree with her. Hallelujah. We're for her. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Listen, family. Let's get ready to pray. Steve McCoy, God bless you. Share, like, and invite. Let's get ready to pray. And to all the viewers that are on live, but they cannot come in. Hallelujah. You're going to have to send me a friend request before you'll be able to come in. Hallelujah. Just shout up like that. Hallelujah. Miss Griffin, God bless you. Oh, uh, Mr. McCoy, I don't know if you know, but hallelujah. The race ain't given to the strong nor the swift, but them that endure until the end. You never retire from Christianity. You never retire from running for God. So, you know, I'm going to stay at it. Hallelujah. Miss Maxwell, God bless you. Share, like, and invite. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Family, send the fire. We're getting ready to pray. Let's set the atmosphere. Let's get ready to go in because a lot of people, St Stephen McCoy, a lot of people, they let go. You know, they get bored in God because they don't want to go in the deepness of God. God bless you, Mr. West. God bless you, Mr. West. In Jesus' name. God don't make no mistake. You know, we praying for the families that lost a loved one. We pray. Hallelujah. 
We praying for them. Hallelujah. We praying for the bereaved family. Beth, God bless you, Beth. LaPortia Walker, God bless you. Shell like an invite. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to pray, family. Hallelujah. The Lord said, make your request be made known unto God. Whatever you need God to do, I want you to believe him for it. Tonight is the night. Tonight is the night your whole life can turn around. God can do everything but fail. Miss Hatcher, God bless you. Share like an invite. We going in. Some, somebody that can't invite uh, Remy, go find uh, Michelle Neal, our cousin, and invite her on. Hallelujah. But y'all share like and invite your followers, man. We trying to touch heaven. Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread and he fed a multitude. Hallelujah. So that means that, hallelujah, we can, he can take a little and make a lot out of it. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Let's get, let's get ready to get into this prayer, send the fire, and let's get ready to get into the word. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I give the life to you. Father, use it for your glory. Father, do what only you can do. Work a miracle in our life. Father, for we know that you don't make a mistake. That you're Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Father, we know that you sit high and low. No, Father, we know Father, that you said in your word you'll never leave us or forsake us. You'll be with us to the end. You said you'll be a present help in our time of trouble. You said you'll be a bridge over troubled water. Father, in the name of Jesus, every person on the live, cover them under your blood. Shield and protect them from any seen and unseen danger. Father, do what only you can do in their life tonight, God. Work a miracle. Father, give us this day our daily bread. Father, we need a word from you. Father, for you said in your word, Everything going down but the word. And Father, give us this word today, our daily bread, a word from heaven. Fresh manna, nothing stale, nothing outdated. But we need a right now word. And Father, we know that you don't make a mistake. Father, forgive us for our shortcomings, our incapability. Forgive us for not praying like we should, for not seeking you like we should. Father, forgive us, God. For not doing what you tell us to do. Forgive us for being petty. Forgive us, God, for, for not listening, God. Forgive us for not telling people what you're saying to tell them. Father, forgive us, God, for not even thanking you for what you have done for us. Lord, we take time now to thank you for everything you've done already. God, we thank you. For how you shielded and protected us while we slumbered in sleep. We thank you how you protected us up and down the dangerous highways and byways, God. We thank you, God, that you allowed us to arrive at each destination in one piece and come back home in one piece. And God, we thank you and we're forever grateful. God, surround this line with your fire, consuming fire. Let your fire be evident tonight. God, we get rid of all religious minds. And God, renew our minds now. Renew our strength. Some people are barely making it. But God, through this life, touch somebody tonight. Do what only you can do tonight. God, work a miracle in their life. And Father, we decree and declare it done. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Listen. Listen, family. I need y'all because it's only right. Just tell God thank you. Just tell God thank you. Because a lot of us woke up and didn't even tell him. Glory be to the Lamb of God. A lot of us woke up and didn't even tell God thank you. Good as God has been. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. 
You didn't have to do it, but you did. And Lord, I thank you. And I'm forever grateful. The way we started will be the way we finish. That's why a lot of people make New Year's resolutions and they, and they don't hold to it. They don't hold steadfast to it. But one thing about God, we thank God. We thank God for who God is and what God is doing. Even though it may not feel good, it's working for our good. I want to encourage you tonight to learn to tell God thank you sometime. Want more of the blesser than the blessing. I want to give you a hint, a clue. That if you want more, hallelujah, of God, God wants more of you. He'll turn your life around. Sharon Rivers, I didn't see you. God bless you. He'll turn your world around. Sonia Thompson, God bless you. Share like and invite Leslie Whitfield. God bless you. God will turn your life around. God will take nothing and make something out of it. Do you remember in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, the Bible declares that he formed man from the dust. Stuff that we walk, we wipe away. Leon Moss, Martha Allen, God bless each and every one of you. Share like an invite. But God took dust and made man. And he said, I took something that people Hallelujah. Ah, peace and blessings, Mr. Allen Jr. Hallelujah. That's a blessing. Katrina, God bless you. Hallelujah. But listen, my God, keep pressing, man of God. Keep pressing. Hallelujah, Jesus, my God. I feel a shift getting ready to take place. I want to encourage somebody tonight to hold on just a little while longer. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be coming from 2 Chronicles, 2 Corinthians. Cornell, I didn't see you come in, but God bless you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Verse Number eight, verse number five, and then verse number eight. Hallelujah. We, we ain't going to leave you, Miss Chapman. Hallelujah. My God. God bless you, Brandy. Hallelujah. We got to pursue after righteousness. Mr. Allen Jr., we, we got to stand up for righteousness. No matter who's around, because God is counting on us to do the right thing. Even though everybody around us doing the wrong thing, God is counting on us to do the right thing. Somebody got to show people what living save is. Somebody got to hold up the blood stained banner to let people know that there is a way that seemed right unto man, but the end thereof is death. We can't do things the way man want us to do it. We have to do it the way God want it done. Not our will, but his will be done in our life. Hallelujah. Shannon, you get time, invite Joyce on. Shannon, you get time, invite Joyce on. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. My God. Somebody put that for some people. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. We're going to start at verse 5, but then we're going to skip to verse 8. My God, listen, hallelujah, Jesus. God is so amazing, family. God can do anything but fail. God bless you, uh, Felicia, uh, Bernard. God bless both of you. Share, like, and invite. But I want to encourage somebody tonight that feel like they're being pressed on every side. 
that feel like that their back is against the wall, that feel like the more good I do, the more evil presents itself. I want to talk to somebody tonight that they're holding on, but they're almost getting ready to lose their grip. God told me to encourage his people. He said, listen, go back, go out into the vineyards. We're in the vineyards today. He said, feed my sheep. Tell them to hold on. Because the enemy making you think that is one way. But God said, I'm getting ready to work it out in your favor. God said, what the enemy meant for your evil, I'm going to work it out for your good. I know that it hurts you. I know how you feel because I created you. I have the blueprints to you. I created you in my image, in my likeness. Am I talking to anybody tonight that's getting ready and wanted to let go? But you needed to be encouraged to hold on. You, you needed to be encouraged to hold on. You needed to be encouraged to hold on. You. If, if this is for you tonight, just say it's for me. Just, just say, this is for me because I, I'm only giving you what God give me and I know when God speaks what he's saying and God told me to tell his people to hold on a little while longer. My God. God told me to tell his people to hold on just a little while longer. If it's for you, say it's for me. Because God going to work a miracle in your life. You don't understand. By the time we close this live out tonight, you're going to understand why God is telling you to hold on a little while longer. Felicia Williams, CK, you get uh, Erica and may, or maybe her mother on. I mean, you can invite them. I mean, they may not be on Facebook due to the situation. Uh, but, uh, you know, just send an invite on there. You don't have to call them or nothing like that. But listen, God told me to tell you tonight to hold on. To God's unchanging hand, it looked like I'm losing. It looked like that I will not be able to make it out of this situation. It looked like that they're getting the best of me. But God told me to tell you, Uncle Richard, to hold on. It looked like it may not work out, but God said it's working out for your good. We serve a God that changes not. We serve a God that sitteth high and looketh low. God said it's working for your good. I know the devil have painted you a picture of failure, but God had come today through his son, his servant, to speak to you today. God bless you, Joyce, to let you know tonight. That you have to hold on. A songwriter wrote a song before. Said hold on. And see what the end is going to be. The reason why. The enemy is attacking you. Jesus. Mr. Congratulations Mr. Uh, Lowe. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Marriage is a beautiful thing. So congratulations. Hallelujah. Share like an invite. Hold on a little while longer. God ain't asking you to hold on and never get nothing. If God tells you to hold on, he's telling you to hold on because he knows the end at the beginning. Some of you are walking away, my God Jesus. Some of you are walking away. Some of you are getting ready to give up, but you're getting ready to walk into the biggest blessing that you have ever seen. You're getting ready to experience God on a whole nother level. And because it feels like you're being pressed, it feels like you are being pushed around. It, it feels, it don't even feel good. Let's be real. It don't even feel good. But just because it does not feel good Does not mean it's not working for your good The enemy always wants you to feel one way We don't go by feelings We walk by faith and not by sight Glory be to the Lamb of God 2 Corinthians chapter 4 For we preach, verse number 5 For we preach not ourselves 
but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servant for Jesus sake I didn't come on here to tell you about me but to uplift the name of Jesus because I can't be with you always but Jesus said I'll never leave you nor forsake you I'll be with you to the end what am I saying is when we get off the line I'm not with you but you got to be willing to grab hold of this rope and say, listen, I ain't letting you go. My God. My God. I see where God going with this. Hallelujah. I got to do this, family. My God. Hallelujah. Ooh. I got to get this, family. Hallelujah. My God. Whew. My God. To the break of day. Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hmm. Okay. God bless you, Jeffrey. Hallelujah. I see where the Lord taking this. Because there's some people that, that listen. That need to know to hold on. Hallelujah. To God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. God can do everything but fail, family. And some of us don't realize that God can do everything. And just because we don't realize that God can do it does not mean that God cannot do it. Now listen. I, I want to encourage you. Listen. Somebody jot this down. Genesis chapter 32. Verse number 24. Diane Richards, God bless you. Genesis, hallelujah. Chapter 32, verse number 24. Somebody write that down. Very briefly. I'm going to help somebody tonight. I want to encourage you tonight, family. The Lord spoke, told me to go somewhere else. We'll get back to that if the Lord's will. Understand that we are spirit led, not people led. So I can't just preach what you want me to preach. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 32. Thank you. With you. Thank you, Sister King. Verse number 24. And Jacob was left alone. There wrestled a man with him unto the break of day. My God. Thank you, Father. The Bible says, anybody know who Jacob is? They, they, God named him Israel. And Jacob had, my God. I'm going to take y'all somewhere. I'm going to take y'all somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Everybody in Genesis chapter 24, chapter 32, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. And doesn't this remind you of you? When you in your situation, it feels like you all alone. My God. God bless you, Miss Hill. It feels like you all alone in your situation. Who am I talking to tonight? It feels like you're all alone in your situation. Nobody understands. Nobody can, has the right words to say. Nobody can understand what you are going through. But I come here, not in my name, but in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, Jesus. I feel a powerful move of God getting ready to take place. Don't miss your hour of visitation. I want to encourage you tonight. God said, hold on. God said, hold on. Just a little while longer. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 32. And Jacob was left alone. That's you. When you look around, you're all by yourself. You're all alone. The people that should be there, they are not even there. Am I talking to anybody tonight? You look around and the family that should have your back, they don't even have your back. Lord, I preach it. Lord, I preach it. I'll teach it, God. God bless you, Sister Quanita. Share like an invite. Somebody on your timeline needs to hear this. Mika, God bless you, shall like an invite. We're in Genesis chapter 32, verse number 24. My God, 
God is saying, hold on. The Bible said that Jacob was left alone. That's you. you you've been left alone in your situation. You look around and no one's there but you. My God. I'm going to encourage you to hold on. You've been left alone. People have wrote you off. People have walked away from you. The people who said they'll be by your side, they walked away. The people that you counted on the most was not even there. They didn't even understand the pressure that you was in. But my God, we serve a God that sits high and look low. We serve a God that doesn't even change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm getting ready to talk to you tonight concerning your situation. My God, Jesus. The Bible said that Jacob was left alone. How many times have you looked around and found out that even though I got kin, even though I got family, even though I got friends, I'm still alone. Uh, I'm still alone. And I even feel somebody want to cry tonight, but God said weeping may endure for a night. God said, I just want you to hold on. Because joy is coming in the morning. My God. God is getting ready to shift your entire life. I'm already prophesying to somebody. God is getting ready to shift your entire life. And it looked like the time that I'm being pressed on every side. The time that I'm being crushed. No one is there. Lord, why am I being left alone when I need somebody to be here for me? Lord, why nobody don't understand what I'm saying when I'm going through what I'm going through? God, please send somebody. Send me a word. I need a word tonight. I need a word tonight. Some of you cannot wait till tomorrow to get a word. You need a word right now. Because your back been against the wall. The enemy been fighting you left and right and right and left. And you try to smile to keep from crying. Because you're trying to uphold an image. But on the inside you're breaking down. And you're shattering on the inside. Because I'm in a situation. And the people that should know they don't even know. The Bible said that Jacob was left alone. The whole time he had people with him. But the time that he needed somebody, he was left alone. Yes, I'm talking to you tonight. You've been left alone. You looking for your family and your friends and you look around and no one's there. Yes, I'm talking to you. You 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 looking around and, and you saying, Lord, where is everybody? And no one's there. And I look around and, and, and when I'm going through, I, I don't see the people that gonna say they're going to help me through. I can't find the people that said they'll be with me. Because anybody could be slick at talking, but I need somebody that's willing to stay up with me in the wee wee hours and pray. I need somebody that's willing to seek his face with me. I need somebody to understand that I done bear the load long enough. I'm a walking time bomb. My God. The more I do good, the more evil presents itself. But listen, I tried to make up my mind to serve God. And as soon as I made up my mind to serve God, I got hit on the left. I got hit on the right. I got hit in the top. Left and right and right and left. My God. Listen, we're going to bounce back and forth very briefly. But I need you to catch this revelation. I need you to know to hold on tonight to God's unchanging hand. 2 Corinthians, come on, somebody put this. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 8 and 9. Once they put it, we'll go to it. Listen, I want to encourage you tonight that, listen, you got to hold on. The devil been hitting you left and right and right and left. And God said, listen here, enough is enough. If you hold on to the break of day. That's why he said in his word, we've been made 
endure for a night. Some of you, it looked like it been night long enough, but that was not what he was saying. He was saying you may weep for a little while because if you look at day and night, you you don't even catch a most of the night. There we go. Come on, Second Corinthians chapter four, verse number eight and nine. You want to know why you've been hit? My God. Now listen to this. Genesis thirty-two, verse twenty-four. And Jacob was left alone. Now hold that thought. Now Second Corinthians chapter number four, verse number eight and nine. We are troubled on every side, my God, Jesus, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I'm holding on. But I'm troubled on every side. Who am I talking to tonight? You holding on, but there's trouble on every side. Tonight is your night. It's enough of playing like you got it all together. When people come around, you got it all together. I went to see a guy today. God laid it on my heart. God said, go see it. I went to sit down and talk. Just sit down with it. My God. And, and as I was sitting with it, God was speaking to me. But I was speaking to the situation. Because people don't understand that the pressure that the world will place on you. So I was sitting there. I didn't go on my own. God shut me. And when God shut me, I went. I didn't tell him nothing. I said, what you doing? How everything going? What's going on? Why? Because they had been in a pool situation. They've been fighting left and right and right and left. And I knew, my God, Jesus. I knew because God told me that there was a fight going on on the inside what people were not seeing. Because men look at the outer appearance. Come on, somebody. But God looks at the heart. Am I talking to you tonight? But as I sat there and as I allowed them to talk, I begin in my mind to command peace in the house. I begin to command the atmosphere to shift into the atmosphere of God. Because we ain't only name changers, we game changers. When God come on the scene, he changed that thing around. But this person was there and they were holding it all together. They were holding it all together, but the whole time they wanted to crack. But I told God, strengthen us. Sometimes, if you listen to God, you'll show up on time. If you listen to God, you'll be right on time. My God, I went to his house and I just sat. I didn't have to let him know the reason I was there. For God was doing a work. Because people don't understand the situation that they're facing. People don't understand what it's like to give all and get nothing. Because the people that don't understand it, they're always the ones taking, not giving. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I want to talk to you tonight. Because the ship's getting ready to hit your house. God's getting ready to shift this thing around and make it work out for your good. Now the Bible said in Genesis 32 chapter 24 that Jacob was left alone. But in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 verse number 8 and 9, he said we are troubled on every side. Are you troubled? On every side. Hold on. Just a little while longer. Are you troubled on every side? Yet not discreet. We are perplexed but not despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. He won't forsake you. We're going to leave that. We're going to bounce back and forth because I see where God taking this thing. And Jacob was left alone. Genesis 32. Mr. West, you still on here? And Jacob was left alone and there rustled a man with him until the breaking of the day. 
My God, Jacob is holding on, family. Jacob said, listen, I'm a rouser for mine. No, I'm not telling you to fight for your, but hold on to God. Don't let God go because of situations and circumstances that the earth may produce, the world may produce in front of you. Do you realize that God is more bigger than any current situation you face in? God is more stronger. God is more powerful than anything that you ever faced in your life when you realize that you give everything to God. God will give everything to you. Come back your own lie. The devil trying to fight this lie, family. But he's a liar. And the truth ain't in it. Share like and invite. Make it go viral. Because somebody is on the verge of letting go. But God told me to tell you tonight. Don't let go. We have Jacob left alone. And a lot of times we don't realize why we by ourselves. We don't realize why we by ourselves. Because when we left alone, God can speak to us. When we left alone, God can show up for us. When we left alone, some of you don't even understand why God has left you to feel like you're alone. You saying that I don't even understand why I'm around people, but I still feel alone. God said, I had to get you to yourself for myself, my God, Jesus. Even though you feel like you can be around a whole bunch of people and still feel alone. You can be in a house full of people and you can still feel alone. God said, I've created you in my image and my likeness. Some of you getting ready to experience the hands of God moving your life. My God, I'm fit to help somebody tonight. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Some of you don't want to wrestle with this thing. Some of you don't want to hold on to it. The race ain't given to the strong or the swift, but them that endure until the end. Some of you got to hold on just a little while longer. Verse 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with it. As he wrestled with it. We wrestled, my God, Jesus. I'm going to speak some divine revelation in your life. You need to get some fresh manna from heaven tonight. Now we have Jacob wrestling with a man, but he was left alone. The Bible never said a man walked up, but the Bible said appeared a man. My God, an angel appeared, appeared unto Jacob. And Jacob began to wrestle with the angel. I'm going to help somebody tonight. Make sure you catch this. Jacob is wrestling with an angel. Jacob is holding on and wrestling with an angel. Because Jacob needs something to take place. And Jacob said, if I got to wrestle, I'll wrestle. But one thing I will not do, I will not let go. Some of you tonight, some of you tonight, you ought to be wrestling to keep your dignity. You ought to be wrestling to stay and save. You ought not to let the devil play in your mind and create a playground in your mind. You ought to wrestle for what's yours. Now, I'm not telling you to wrestle for no woman or no man, but for your joy. But for your peace. But for your happiness. Wrestle. Jacob is wrestling. He said, listen. What I like about this. Uncle Richard, I need you to catch this. My God. I need you to understand. And hold on a little while longer. The Bible said. It ain't me. I'm reading out the Bible. Just check it. Chapter Genesis. Chapter number 32. Verse number 25. 
And when he saw that he prevailed not against the angel, he touched the hollow of his thigh, my God. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. Jacob wrestling with an angel. Jacob holding on to an angel. Because it's something I need God to do for me. And as Jacob wrestled, here's his divine revelation. The hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. Jacob then messed around and got injured in this. Genesis chapter 32. Jacob then messed around wrestling with an angel and then got injured. But Jacob still did not let go because he got injured. Some of you, just because you lost somebody, you let go. Just because the deal did not work out the way you wanted, you let go of God. You were praying until this situation happened. You were seeking him until this happened. And now you want to let go. But I'm here to tell you, Jacob is wrestling and his hip is out of place. Do you understand? Jacob is wrestling. And his hip is out of place. Who am I talking to tonight? Your hip, you, you get injured and you let go. You get your feelings hurt and you let go. People walk away from you and you let go. My God, Jesus. But God said, listen. You can let go of them, but don't let go of me. I created you in my image, in my likeness. Jacob is wrestling with his hip out of joint, Uncle Richard. Do you hear me? Auntie Angela, Jacob is wrestling and he's injured. Lisa, Auntie Lisa, come on and talk to me. Do you hear me? Remy, do you hear me? Lou, do you hear me? Miss King, do you hear me? Jacob is wrestling and he's injured. But that does not stop Jacob from holding on to what he needs. Some of you have gotten injured off of your own ways. Yes. It's going somewhere. Remy, I need you to understand that Jacob got hurt wrestling, but he did not let go of God. Do you understand that situations in your life might have hurt you, Auntie Lisa? But Jacob did not let go because he was hurt. No, Jacob did not let go of God because somebody hurt him. Do you understand? I'm glad. Do you understand? I'm for because my feelings were hurt. I still held on to God. Because they walked away from me, I still trusted God. Because the deal didn't go through, I still held on to God. Jacob is wrestling with God and he's injured. The angel of the Lord is there and Jacob wrestling with him. Some of you get injured and you back off. Some of you people talk about you and you walk away. Some of you let the situation control you and you don't control the situation. You let the situation control you. Read them. Are you here? Read them more. Don't let the situation control you. You control the situation. My God. I'm speaking something tonight. Now Jacob is wrestling. And he done got injured. But he's still wrestling. He's still holding on. He's still. He's still holding on. Because Jacob needs something from God. And some of you are standing in the need for something from God. And God said, hold on just a little while longer because I'm going to make it manifest. Watch this. So now we realize that, that Jacob, we're in Genesis chapter 30, 32. Hallelujah. We're in verse number 25. We go into verse 26. Jacob is injured, but he's not letting go. You went to church and people hurt you. So you turned your back on God. God wasn't the one that hurt you. People did. But because you got injured in the church, 
you didn't go look for another place of shelter. Just because you got hurt in the, in, in the world, you know, people clubbing and doing everything. Because a person hurt you, you don't let go of God because Jacob didn't. Jacob said, listen, I'm holding on. I'm going to hold on because I know there's something that he got because he was left alone. And then he realized an angel appeared in front of him. So he said, listen, before he leave, I'm going to get it. I'm going to hold him until he give me what's due to me. Because I need God to do something in my life. I need God to work something out in my life. And a lot of you are getting ready to walk out of church because somebody hurt you. Or because of how somebody acted. Or because of what somebody did. But God said, why is Jacob holding on and he injured? But because somebody talked about you, you let him go. You walk away from God. Every church ain't the same. Every church ain't the same. Every church ain't the same. My God, Jesus. I'm talking to somebody tonight. We in Genesis chapter 32, verse number 26. And he said, let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. My God. I'm getting somewhere. Uncle Richard, are you getting this? The angel began to talk to Jacob, even though Jacob is the one hurt. The angel said, listen here, let me go before the break of day. We didn't endure for a night, but Sean comes in the morning. Let me go for daybreak in here because there's some people that don't need to see me. Because God ain't coming to see everybody. God coming to see you. That's why you were left alone. That's why you feel like you're all alone. God ain't come to see the crowd. The crowd. God come to do a visitation for you. And now you feel alone and you don't understand that God getting ready to send an angel to appear before you. God getting ready to send an angel to talk to you, to minister to you, to minister the part of you that people don't see. Because they figure that you got it all together. That there's no area in your life that's lacking. But the truth of the matter is, it's an area that they can't see. Because man look at the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. God said, I got you by yourself. Now I'm allowing an angel to appear. But when the angel appeared to Jacob, Jacob grabbed him. Oh, I know who you is. Oh, I know who you is. I'm holding on. I'm not letting go. I know who you is. Everyone that's coming in, share like it, invite God bless each and every one of you. We're in Genesis chapter 32, verse number 26. They said, listen, I know who you is. But the angel said, listen, you got to let me go. You hurt, Jacob. But Jacob said, I don't care if I'm hurt. What am I saying? I don't care if people hurt me. I'm still holding on to God. I don't care if the situation don't feel good. I'm still holding on to God. Because a lot of us, when we feel bad, we'll let go. We'll walk away. And God ain't even did nothing against us or to us. But because the enemy is sitting up here telling you that it won't work, you let go. Yes, you, you walk away just because of what the enemy said. But the race ain't given to the strong or the swift, but them that endure unto the end. You might not can fight like you were fighting when you first got in it, but don't give up fighting. Don't give up seeking God because I went to a church, Kim, and I got hurt. My God. I got church hurt, so I'm going to stop seeking God. That ain't the time to stop seeking God. God is saying, hold on. Hold on just a little while longer. My God. Now, Jacob is wrestling and the angel again to talk to Jacob. And the angel said, watch this in 26. And he said, let me go for the day break. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Jacob said, listen here, angel. I don't care who see you. I don't care what go on. I'm not letting you go until I get what I came here for. You here, I needed God. Now God is here. I'm not letting you go until I get what I came here for. Yes. 
Verse 27, and he said unto him, What is thy name? My God, Jesus. Come on, somebody. He said, Jacob, verse number 28. We're in Genesis. Y'all, we, we riding tonight. We're in Genesis chapter 32. He said, that name, that name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince had thy power with God and with men, and had prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he said, bless him then. And he blessed him then. And he blessed him. Because he did not give up because he got injured. Jacob told this angel, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Now, I know you need to be gone before the daybreak. But I need my peace back. But I need my joy back. But I need my strength back. But I need my life back. And I'm not letting you go until I get what I came here for. Who am I talking to tonight? I'm not letting God go When he appeared The angel appeared Here's the thing I need you to catch this divine revelation Here's the thing Jacob is wrestling with an angel Like he can win Can Jacob beat an angel? No Jacob can't beat an angel You can't beat an angel But my God Jacob said, I might can't beat him, but I might get hurt in this situation, but I ain't letting go until he bless me. I'm telling you, you need to hold on a little while longer. I'm telling you that your healing is in the holding on. Your deliverance is in the holding on. Your breakthrough is in the holding on. Your turnaround is in the holding on. Jacob said, I ain't letting you go. I don't care if I'm hurt. Jacob ain't talking to no people that doesn't hurt him. Jacob talking to an angel and because he wanted to wrestle with something he could not win. He didn't get blessed because he could not win it. He got blessed because the race wasn't given to the strong nor the swift, but them that endure until the end. And he knew as long as I got God's attention, God will do Whatever I ask, as long as I abide in him, he'll abide in me, ask what I will, and it shall be given. Some of you are letting go of God because of what a man does, because of what a woman does. You are letting go of God because of what somebody else has done. And God ain't even did nothing but woke you up. God didn't even do anything but started you out of your day, but protected you, but you let God go because you have got injured because of someone else. Situations have injured you and you want to let God go. But Jacob said, listen, I'm going to hold on. Jacob said, I'm going to hold on to this angel. Because I truly believe that Jacob understood when the Bible said, seek me while I may be found. Call upon me while I'm near. Let the wicked forsake his ways. Because there's going to come a time. Where you won't be able to call on him. He's telling you today to seek him. A lot of people are letting go of God. Because of situations and circumstances in their life. But I come to give you a reality check. You're wrong. God ain't told you to let go of him. Because of a situation. God can fix anything. But it's all about your enduring power. Do you realize that Jacob is wrestling with an angel? Some of you have been left all alone. And when you've been left all alone, all the problems come on you. And all, in reality, see, see and, and people have left you and you've been hurt or you have lost a loved one or this has happened and that has happened. And why are you by yourself? It all piles on you. The enemy try to piles it on you. But one thing about Jacob, Jacob knew that he really and truly could not beat an angel. Jacob knew that he really and truly could not win this battle. But that did not stop Jacob from trying. This battle is not yours, but God. But God looking for some people that's going to hold on. Come hell or high water. 
God looking for some people that's going to hold on when, when, when things don't go the way you planned them to go, but the way God planned them to go. Not your will, but his will be done in your life. Reality check. Knock, knock. Some of you are holding on for dear life. And you are getting ready to give up because of the situation that happened in your life. Because you did not understand the situation. But Jacob did not understand what he was going through. But Jacob knew that he needed God. And the more you need God, the more you need to hold on to God. I got to have God. Jacob said, listen here. He wrapped the angel. He said, listen. I ain't letting you go. Until you bless me. What am I saying? Some of you need to get in the face of God. And say God I ain't getting off of my face. Until you help me in this situation. God I'm not going to leave your presence. Until I feel better. But some of you are giving up on God. Just because of what somebody else had done to you. God ain't done nothing to you. But protected you. But kept you. When people hurt you. You cried on God's shoulder. But the problem is you did not see God because you were looking in the natural. When you lost someone, you figured you would lose your mind, but yet you still here. It ain't by might nor by power. We got to give credit what credit is due. Jacob said, listen here, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. If I lose somebody, I'm just going to go to God and I'm going to have, I'm going to hold on to him. God ain't letting you go. I don't understand what's going on in my life, but God ain't letting you go. Who am I talking to tonight? You was getting ready to let go, but God wanted to encourage you tonight. Don't let go. Hold on just a little while longer. Jacob grabbed the angel. And as Jacob grabbed the angel, Jacob began to wrestle with him. The angel said, listen, let me go before daybreak. And Jacob, and, and Jacob said, no, nah, I ain't letting you go. He said, listen, I got to go before daybreak. Let me go. People don't need to see me. That's why Jacob was alone. Because God wanted to send an angel to appear to Jacob. So God had Jacob all by himself and an angel appeared unto him. You wonder why Jacob was by himself. You wonder why when you was in that situation, you felt alone. God said, because I'm sending my ministering angels to minister to you. But because you're not willing to listen. Because you don't understand what's going on. God said, all I'm asking you to do is trust me knowing I know the end at the beginning. Jacob grabs the angel. God sends a ministering angel to Jacob. Jacob grabs the angel and begins to wrestle with the angel. But old Jacob Hill got thrown out of place. But what, you, what I like about God, Jacob trusted God. Even though Jacob was hurt, Jacob did not let go. Jacob, his hip out of place. But Jacob still holding on. I ain't letting you go until you bless me. They said, listen, you got to let me go because day coming and I don't need nobody else to see me because I came to see you. God is talking to somebody tonight. He said, listen, you feel alone because I didn't come for everybody. I came for you. So Jacob said, listen, I ain't letting you go. I understand you came to minister to me, but I ain't letting you go until you bless me. He said, what? He said, no, I ain't letting you go. I'm hurt. I'm injured. My hip out of place. But what I need for God to do, I can't let God go. Some of you need God to work a miracle. You can't let God go. If you want God to work a miracle, you need to wrestle until that miracle manifests. My God, and he said unto him, what is thy name? He said, listen, I'm Jacob. God is asking you, when you rise, he said, what's your name? What do you want? What do you want? But this is what get me. Jacob knew that he could not beat the angel. But Jacob did not give up because of the situation. Because he was hurt. Jacob didn't give up on God. Jacob did not give up. Jacob did not let go. That's why I'm encouraging you tonight to hold on just a little while longer. Some of you were getting ready to let go. You were hanging on by a thread. You were getting ready. You shaking and you getting ready to let go. But listen here, my brothers and my sisters. Strengthen your grip. Gird up your loins. God said, I'm getting ready to work a miracle in your life. 
Jacob did not realize that God sent the angel to bless Jacob. I'm going to help somebody. God, Jacob did not realize God sent the angel to help Jacob. The angel was going to bless Jacob anyway. But because Jacob felt like that the angel was going to leave without him blessing him. My God. Anytime you see an angel appear. The angel appear because he's coming for something. My God. Jesus. Who am I talking to tonight? The angel appeared to Jacob. To bless Jacob. But Jacob is holding on to the angel. That's how his heel got thrown out of play. Because Jacob began to wrestle with what God sent to bless him. What am I saying? God tore that house up so God can bless you. Because God could not bless you in that mess. Huh? God tore that house up so God can bless you. God told that relationship up so God can bless you. God allowed you to get church hurt so God can take you to a real church because they had the form of godliness but they denied the power thereof. Some of you are walking in darkness because you trusting in man but not in God. But my Bible tells me that my faith should not stand in the wisdom of man but in the power of God. I trust God before I trust man. But Jacob felt like that he knew everything. That if he would let this opportunity pass him by. See the first part of this message was for some of y'all. But I'm getting ready to feed the rest of y'all. Listen. They don't know about You know what I'm saying? Like what the word like. Quit calling. You know like. My God Jesus. I ain't nothing but the devil. I ought to say that. I will just say you ain't nothing but the devil. Child of the devil, call him. My God. Anyway. So we have Jacob. Our angel appeared. Now listen. When our angel appeared to you, you don't have to wrestle with what God sent to bless you. When you lost somebody, I know you don't understand how it's a blessing, but my God, look at the world we living in. My God, look at the stuff you're facing. My God, look at the trials and tribulations. The Bible says that we should rejoice when they leave and we should cry when they come. But we done got this thing all backwards. When they come, we happy. But when they leave, we sad. God is saying tonight, listen. God sent the angel. This is divine revelation. God sent the angel. This is for the other half. If you eat tonight, let me know if you're eating. If you're eating, if there's word feeding you, tell me, tell me you're eating. I'm eating. Let me know if you're eating tonight. Now, God sent an angel because Jacob was by himself. The angel really came to bless Jacob anyway. Some of you, the situation that you was in, God said, I broke it up to bless you. Some of you was going down the wrong road. And something happened. And you felt like. That this is hurting me. But God said no. In actuality. This is helping you. Because I can't bless no mess. But I can make a mess. A message. If you eating tonight. If you eating. Let me know you eating. God said I can't bless a mess. My God. So now Jacob is wrestling with what is getting ready to bless him. My God. The angel is getting ready to bless Jacob, but because it's for the other half. But because Jacob did not understand why the angel was there in the first place, he decided to wrestle with an angel that came to bless him. And because you want to wrestle with the word of God, you get hurt. You get injured. Because you want to wrestle against the word of God. God said, listen, be ye holy, for I am holy. But because you want to get, be hoish. Oh, I said it. Yes. Because you want to be hoish and not holy, you got hurt. Yes. But it was to help you, not to hurt you. Because God had to take you out of that situation, out of that circumstance, out of that dead relationship, out of that dead marriage, out of that dead thing. Because he, out of that dead church. Because God trying to preserve you 
Why everybody else is living any kind of way. Why everybody else is going alone to get alone. God said, listen, I got to let you experience a little church hurt. What am I saying? God said, I'm going to let you see who people really are. And when it, you show, when they show who they really was, it hurt you. But God said, I did not allow that to hurt you for you to run from me. Just enough for you to leave and continue to seek me. Jacob is wrestling with the blessing. Jacob is wrestling with what is sent to bless him. It's some of you. You are wrestling because God has took you out of this marriage. You are wrestling because God took you out of this relationship. You're trying to stay in something that God don't want you in. No. I'm not telling you to go and get a divorce. First seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things shall be added unto you. Seek him. But if it's dead, it's dead. Some of you are rationally trying to keep stuff that God did not give you in the first place. Who am I talking to tonight? I'm wrestling with a situation. I'm wrestling trying to keep my job. But God didn't even want you there in the first place. Jacob, why are you wrestling with an angel that was sent to bless you? Yes. Yes. Why are you wrestling with what God sent to bless you? Some of you are wrestling with this thing. God wants you to be holy, but you want to do anything. That's why I say you can't be holy and holish. You can't date God and the devil. God wants you to be in a committed relationship with him. Now I fed two sets of people tonight. I fed the set of people that were getting ready to let go. And God said, hold on. And God said, hold on. But I also fed a set of people that are wrestling with their blessing. They are wrestling with what God sent to bless them. God was on to change Jacob's name to Israel anyway. His name was came to be changed in a way. He was going to get a blessing in a way. But this is for the other half. You got to figure out was you the first half or the second half. Which one are you? Which one are you? Are you the one? I want you to say one or two. The first half is this right here. That you was holding on for dear life. And you were about to let go. But after tonight you said listen I have to strengthen my grip. If you were the second half, you rising with the thing that God is pulling you out of. Which one are you? One or two? Let me know right now. Are you wrestling? Holding on? Because you need God to bless you and you don't even realize. You holding on, but your grip was almost loose. I'm holding on for dear life Is that you? See here's the thing I don't want you to be two I want you to pick one Because I'm feeding two sets of people tonight Either way it goes you're getting blessed Remember Jacob hold on to the angel And said I ain't letting you go to, to your blessing But then Number two Jacob wrestled. He didn't even know that this angel came to bless him. So he began to wrestle with what blessing him. When they talked about you, you had to say something back. I'm holding on for dear life, God. If you're going to do anything, do it in me, Jesus. Some of you are like this. And it doesn't got to like this. But after tonight, God said, script in your grip, baby. God said, hold on just a little while longer. God said, hold on just a little while longer. Because why are you holding on? I'm going to bless you. And some of you will get eat off of the second plate. This plate was the people that don't understand situations in their life. And they wrestle with God when God using that situation to bless them. My God. 
Which are you tonight? One or two? One or two? I want to know which one you are, Val. Shamika, let me know. One or two? You got to be one of them. Because everybody on this live tonight, God said they holding on. They're either wrestling against the blessing or they trying to hold on to the blessing. Which one are you? <laughs> Miss Maxwell, no. I want you to pick one. Either way it go, it's a blessing in both of them. Come on. Summer, I want y'all to pick number one or number two. I want you to search yourself. Because it's impossible to be both. You can't wrestle with what God sent you, right? And then you hold it on for dear life. I'm going I'm to I'm explain it one more time. The first set of people is they seen God, they need something from God, and they hold it on. And they hold it on. The second set of people, God sent an angel to bless them. But they begin to fight the blessing. What I mean by number two is, God let, allowed that relationship to tie up. God allowed you to lose a loved one. God allowed people to talk about you. Instead of you trying to talk back with them. Instead of using that as a blessing. Because them talking about you showed you who they were. Them walking away from you showed you who they were. God wants to know tonight. God wants to know tonight. Are you holding on because you need me to do something? Or you fight against what I done did? You holding on because you need me to do something? And you let you go to your blessing. Or you fight against what I did. You told me to do something. I did. You told me to fix your life. I did. But now you want to fight the thing that I fixed. I'm telling you to let go of the man. But you want to pull him back in. I'm telling you to let go of the streets. But you want to pull the streets back in. I'm telling you to let go of the cussing and the fussing. But you want to pull it back in. I'm telling you to let go of the bingo gambling and rambling. But you want to pull it back in. Why? God said tonight you have to make up your mind. Some of you are wrestling with the very thing that God has sought to bless you. So what they talked about you. So what you found out the preacher wasn't hitting on nothing. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere else Seek another place Never stop seeking his face My God Because what has happened here Is you have people holding on Because they need God to do something But then you have people When God done did something When God done stirred up When God done showed you who people is Now now, you fighting against it. If he removes somebody out of your life, now you trying to bring them back in your life. If he took smoking and drinking away, now you still want to smoke and drink. You trying to go back and pull that in. But it was a blessing that he removed it. It was a blessing that he pulled it. My God, Jesus. So Jacob Russell. So you rap. But the angel said, listen, you got to let me go before daybreak because I don't want people to see me. I'm talking to both of you now. Number ones and the twos. He said, you got to let me go. You got to let me do. You got to let this thing run its course. You got to let people be people. When they talk about you, when they walk away, whether they family, friends, or enemies, let them do. Let them run their race. Let them do what they want to do. It ain't for you to sit here and try to figure out why they doing it. Let them be them. You don't get in trouble for what they do. God is only going to judge you from your reaction to their action. They walked away. They talked about you. They persecuted you. 
They did everything wrong to you. But God said just because they did it wrong does not mean you need to let go of me. Because there's a blessing in the pressing. I want to encourage you tonight to hold on just a little, just a little while longer. If that's you tonight, and you say I'm gonna hold on, make the devil mad and say I'm holding on. But if you was number one, you need to say I'm holding on. But if you were the second group of people that I fed, you need to say I'm gonna stop wrestling against what God is pulling me out of. That God is pruning from me. I'm gonna stop wrestling against it. Because God knows best. If I'm if you're not gonna if you're gonna stop, say God, I'm holding on. That's the group one. But group two, I need you to say, I'm not wrestling against you no more, Lord. What the enemy meant for my evil, God is working it out for my good. Some of you was on the verge of giving up. Your back was against the wall. You wanted to let go. But God sent me tonight on an assignment to encourage his children to hold on just a little while longer. Now, if you was number two, stop wrestling with the blessing. It was a blessing for them to leave. It's a blessing for them to talk about you. They persecute you, God promotes you. I'm going to stop wrestling with the blessing. Even though it does not look like a blessing to you. Thank God for pulling me out of a situation that could have been deadly. Thank God for pulling me out of a relationship that could have been stressful. Thank God for pulling me out around people that mean me no good. I got hurt, but that's because I was wrestling against the blessing. That's number two. But number one, I want to encourage you to hold on. I'm going to stop wrestling with the blessing and let the blessing manifest. Because if I wrestle with the blessing, I'm going to get hurt. If I wrestle with the blessing, I'm going to get hurt. But if I let the blessing manifest, it won't hurt me. Some of you are holding on tonight. But the case, what I want to bring together, I want to bring group one. And I want to bring group two together. And say, we holding on. If we holding on, let us know that we holding on. Whether I'm with one or two, we holding on. We holding on. You understand, Miss Few? When God removed people out of your life, you wrestled with it. You didn't understand it almost put you in a state of depression. You could not eat, you could not sleep. Because you wrestled with this thing. But lo and behold. That God was really trying to bless me the whole time. Because God wanted to get me right. Because before I could get to, with somebody else and get right. We holding on tonight family. Situations may arise. Circumstances may come. But we holding on tonight family. Some of you lost loved ones. But I want to encourage you to hold on. You got a race to run. You got a race to run. They finished their race. They did theirs. It's time for you to run this race. We holding on. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's why the angel said, let me go before the break of day. Because the angel was not flesh and blood. And the angel did not want need to be seen. For everybody else. I'm not wrestling anymore. I'm not holding on to what God is telling me to let go. Some of you, you lost the house. But lo and behold, God said, I pulled you out so I can bring you in. I'm holding on. 
We as a family tonight on Shine Box of Chocolate Live. We expected the unexpected. We hold it on. You did not expect from the title of holding on a little while longer to get fed two groups to get fed two different ways from the same passage. We holding on. We holding on. My God, Jesus. Did this help anybody tonight? We getting ready to pray. Was this helpful tonight? Was anybody getting ready to let go? And this work was right on time. We holding on family. We hold it on because we've been made endure for a night. Some of you are facing situations, but they're only night situations. They're not light situations. We've been made endure for a night. It may hurt a little bit, but I want to encourage you, and I'm prophesying in the four winds. For everyone that's going to receive it, your joy coming. In the name of Jesus. I speak peace and joy in your life in the name of Jesus. I speak peace and joy. Miss Chapman, that's what, I can't go nowhere without it. When I, I'm telling you, the fire of God is evident. But God is asking you tonight to hold on. Just a little while longer. Because God got a plan. For your life. You don't know the plan that I think towards you. For you to prosper. It does not feel like I'm going to prosper. It does not feel like I can make it on my own. I'm talking to you. But God said I had to do a stir. And it was painful. But it was necessary. God said so I can show you. That through Christ. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Some of you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. But I want to encourage you tonight. God said, hold on. Because some of you are going to get unexpected checks in the mail. I ain't talking no uh, W-2. Some of you are going to get unexpected checks. But God said, hold on. To his unchanging hand. Because we serve a God that changes not. We serve a right now God that's mighty and strong. We serve a God that has not lost a battle. God is getting ready to open doors for you that no man could shut. And God getting ready to shut doors that no man could open. Now listen, here's the thing. God pulled you out of a situation because he knows the end at the beginning. You heard him now. But if God would allow it to keep going on. No telling the pain and the hurt. And the agony. That it will cause you later. I thank God for my blessing. If that's you tonight. Say I thank God for my blessing. I ain't wrestling with it. But I'm just saying I thank God for it. Because when people talked about me. God promoted me. When they persecuted me, I was promoted. I thank God for the talking. I thank God for the people that did not accept me. I thank God for the pruning because they blossomed me. I thank God for the blessing that I did not understand was a blessing. To see people walk away from you. To see people that, don't, that won't support you but be kin to you. I thank God because Jesus was in the temple teaching and Jesus said it like this he said Jesus your mother and your brothers and your sister they want you and he looked at me he said who are my mother and my brothers and my sisters them that do the will of God 
I thank God for what he let go of in my life. Because when God takes something away, he gives something better. Trust God. Hold on. And don't let go. It's a lady on here right now. In the spirit, I see you sitting on the side of your bed. And you're holding the phone. And there's a warm sensation in your belly. Who am I talking to? And you don't even understand your life. But tonight, things begin to make sense. If that's you, say it's me. We getting ready to pray, family. We get ready to pray, family. If that's you, say it's me. My God. I thank God for the blessing. I thank God for everyone who talked about me. I thank God for everyone who walked away from me. I thank God for the situation. My God. Like I see this lady and like I see black and white. Anybody got black on or white or something like that? God is getting ready to work a miracle in your life. My God. Listen, if that's you, you. My God. I thank God for my blessing. I see a lady, y'all, on the edge of the bed. But the lady got on black and white. It's like some black and some white. And it's like she holding the phone. I'm trying to demonstrate. This might not be the side of the bed you sitting on. But you got the phone in your hand. And you looking and you thinking over your life. And you thinking. And you saying. This is for me. Jesus. My God. Whichever lady it is or ladies. I don't care if it's black. I just seen some black. And some white. So if it's you receive this. God said he's getting ready to bring you out of that situation. You've been hurt over and over again. But God said don't let go. God said trust him. God said because he's getting ready to answer some prayers. It's been some time you ain't really just been praying but you've been talking to God. You're like Lord I don't know why. God said, I'm getting ready. God said, I'm getting ready to do something in your life. Jesus. Glory be to the Lamb of God. If that's you. Hallelujah. God said, he's getting ready to do something in your life. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. You watch. I want y'all to watch. I want y'all to pay close attention and remember this word. Hallelujah. And remember this word. Because God getting ready to work a miracle in your life. God getting ready to do what only God can do for you. It's some stuff that you needed God to do. And you did not understand. You didn't even know how God was going to do it. But my God, God said he shall supply 
all your needs according to his riches and glory. You don't even have to cry, woman of God. Sitting on the edge of your bed trying to figure it all out. God said, don't figure it out. I got it worked out. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. We're getting ready to pray. After you receive this, send the fire. You were thinking about a lot of things. You wanted answers. God said, tonight you got answers. Some of us are trying to hold on to what God is pulling, pulling away from us. Because God knows that it's going to cause us hurt. But we want to hold on. Send the fire family, let's pray. Link your faith with my faith. Link your faith with my faith. We're going to pray. For the families that love loved one, we gonna pray for every suicidal spirit to bring be brought to a halt. We're gonna pray over your family. We're gonna pray over your friends. Link your faith with my faith tonight. We getting ready to bombard heaven. He said, let your request be made known unto God. Let's link tonight. Link your faith tonight. God is getting ready to blow your mind just because you did not let go. Just because you held on. Just because you held on. My God. There's a shift coming to your life. Bless you, Tony. There's a shift coming to your life. Link your faith with my faith tonight. Let's bombard heaven. Let's make our requests be made known unto God. The author and the finisher of our faith. My God, God can do everything but fail. Why are we linking faith tonight? I want to read this one verse to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Somebody put that scripture up there, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We must all appear. We must all appear. But after tonight, you didn't understand why they happened to you. Whether it was a lost loved one, whether it was a situation, whether it was circumstances. But whatever happened in your life, it did not catch heaven by surprise. God knew what he was doing. Let's trust his doing. Once you link your faith with my faith tonight, we get ready to pray. We must all appear before the judgment seat. We must all appear before the judgment seat. We ain't going to be together. We're going to appear one by one. And we're going to be judged by the work that we have done, whether good or whether bad. Today, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just accept him now. If you accept him, he'll come in. He'll sup with you. The Bible says he's standing at the door and knock. And any man let him in, he'll come in and sup with you. If you have not accepted him, be man enough, be woman enough right now to say, listen, I accept Jesus Christ 
as my Lord and Savior. That's all you got to do is say, I accept it. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. It's time to pray. Send the fire family. If you have not, if you're on the live and you have not accepted Jesus Christ, today is a good day. Today is the perfect time for you to accept him. He'll forgive you for your sins. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He'll give you a new life. He'll give you a new start. He'll take you places you've never been. He'll deal with situations that you can't deal with. He said, my sheep know my voice. If that's you, they have went astray. And you're hearing God's voice tonight. I'm just a willing vessel. He's calling you back home. Because there's a pastor, there's a field that he want to feed you out of. You have ran us great, but he wants you to come back. Those of you that have not accepted him, accept him tonight. Those of you that had accepted him, but you went astray, tell him I'm coming home. Tell him I'm coming home. And it is done, Cornell. Accept him today and it is done. Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. He said, I forgive you for your sins. I cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Today is your day. Today is your day. Being saved, we can do that right now. Staying saved is a process. It's a day-to-day -day walk. But my God, some people, God is getting ready to move a mountain for you. Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept you. Because I realize that what you pulled away from me was for my good, not for my bad. If you coming home and you was going on, but you coming back home, tell him I'm coming home. Those of you that are accepting him as your Lord and Savior, your personal Lord and Savior, and you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that he rose with all power in his hand. Believe it. Receive salvation today. Receive it today. You are saved. You are saved. Not a gift of God. Not a gift of man. This is a gift of God. Some of you that have went astray. And you're coming back home. You're coming back home. He's standing there. He let you know that he loved you. And that he would do nothing for you. He would do anything. There's nothing that he would not do for you if you bring it to him. I'm coming home. Miss Evans, as you received him today, Shannon, as you received him, as you received him today, Miss Hugh, as you received him, God said, listen, now I will handle your battles. For everyone who has accepted Christ today, he said, I'm going to fight for you. You don't fight. You don't talk. You let me talk for you. Thomas Walter, congratulations on the marriage to come. God said, listen, those of you that have accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior today, he said, now I fight your battle. Now I fight your battle. You don't respond. The way you used to respond. God said, listen, I'll take care of you from here. God said, no longer am I your co-pilot. God said, I am the pilot. You're the co-pilot. Tonight, when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, y'all switch seats. And for those that have come home, God said, come on back. I forgive you. I love you. And there's nothing that I would withhold from you. Come on back and tell me about your problems. Begin to pray for me. Begin to talk to me. Begin to reach out. Begin to seek my faith. Because today is your day. God said there's a party in heaven. And God said he's getting ready 
to blow your mind. Some of you that just are coming back home, God going to have somebody come up to you. They either going to pay for your food, watch this, pay attention. They either going to pay for your food or they going to want to take you out. Or they going to bring you some food. Because God said the prodigal son and the prodigal daughter has come home. Tonight is the night that we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior if we have not. And we give him full custody over our life. And for the ones that are coming back home, prepare yourself. For there's a meal waiting on you. God's going to send somebody. See, I could say it easily. Just listen, I'm going to pay for y'all something to eat. But I want to show you the power of God. And when somebody offers, or when you go somewhere and somebody has paid for your food in advance, I want you to come back and testify on my Facebook page. Because as the prodigal son and daughter coming home, there's a meal waiting on you. God said he's getting ready to feed you. You go, I'm going to talk about a real meal. Like somebody going to take you out. Somebody going to take you out to eat. Somebody going to pay for your meal. God going to send somebody to let you know he's glad that you're back home. Let's pray, family. Send the fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, strengthen that grip, God. Do what only you can do in their life. Work a miracle. Strengthen them where they're weak. Build them up where they've been torn down and nothing. Fill them with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Father, do what only you can do in their life. God, their life will upside down, turn it right side up. God, feed them fresh manna from heaven. Father, do what only you can do. Work a miracle. Father, every spirit of suicide, we bind it now. And we render it powerless. That's going throughout the land. We release love, joy, and peace. The fruits of the spirit in the land. Father, for every person that are facing suicidal thoughts. We cover them under the blood. Renew their mind. Renew their strength right now in the name of Jesus. Father, do what only you can do in their life. Work a miracle tonight. Show them, God, that you still love them. And God, as we pray. For every person with a spirit of infirmity, we bind it, we render it powerless now in the name of Jesus. And we release the healing power of God upon their life. And Father, as we pray for people on their bed of affliction, visit them, strengthen them, do the impossible in their life. Father, we pray it right now in the name of Jesus. Because we serve a miracle working God. God, you can do everything but fail. God, every situation, every way, make it. Do what only you can do. God, for the ones that have accepted you today as their personal Lord and Savior. For the ones that have come back home, provide a meal for them. Let somebody purchase them a meal to let them know, God, that it ain't by might nor by power. God, that you heard their cries tonight. God, for every person, strengthen their grip tonight. Strengthen their grip tonight. Right now in the name of Jesus. God, and we praying for every bereaved family. Strengthen them now. Help them to stand even when they don't understand. God, let them hold on to your unchanging hand. God, give them some peace. Give them some peace. Give them some peace. God, right now in the name of Jesus, every spirit of confusion, we bind it. And we release the spirit of peace. Every spirit of jealousy and pride, we, hit, we, we bind it and we render it powerless. And we release the love of God upon this life, upon our life, like never before. God, do what only you can do. And for the people that have lost something in a house fire, or someone has stole something from them, or they have lost everything through trials and tribulations, through house fires, whatever the case may be, through someone stealing God, do it only you can do. Open a door for them. Provide for them tonight. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we know you can do everything but fail. Visit your people in this hour. Send your fire out. Destroy every yoke, every chain, everything that had them bound. Father, and who the Son set free is free indeed. And Father, we thank you for your visitation tonight. We thank you, God. Endow us with power to run this race. And Father, every blessing, we thank you. For everything you take it from us, we thank you. We trust you, God. We lean and depend on you. 
Father, you said in your way, in your word, you'll never leave us or forsake us. You'll be with us to the end. You'll be a present help in our time of trouble. You'll be a bridge over troubled water. God, you said in your word that let high, my God, Jesus, that let the wicked forsake their ways. God, people are turning away tonight from their ways to your ways, to your will. Let your will be done. You also said in your word, we never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. God, we count ourselves righteous before you. God, we count ourselves righteous. And we decree and declare it done in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Receive it by saying amen. And show some love tonight. Hallelujah. A man of God paid for Miss Kings tonight. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Your will. Hallelujah. Y'all show some love. After you receive the prayer, show some love. We're getting ready to go. We getting ready to go. Hallelujah. We getting ready to go. I don't trust the Lord with all my heart. And I lean not to my own understanding. But in all his ways I acknowledge him and he'll direct my path. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5 and 6. I love each and every one of you. But most importantly, God loves you. And he wanted me to encourage you tonight to hold on just a little while longer. Your manifestation is on the way. Don't let go. And don't wrestle with what God is pulling, it, pulling you away from. Just let it go. Just let it be. If people talk about you, don't get out of the will of God. Just say, I thank you. Because you have kept me when I couldn't keep myself. And for that, God, I love you. And I worship you. And I adore you. I saw you. I lift you up. For your word. To be praised. And we bless your holy name. Listen, family. If you're not already, follow me on Facebook. Follow me. Hallelujah. If you're not already, follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Facebook. Hallelujah. I'm on YouTube at Stamario Hines. It's on there. I'm on YouTube. I'm Stamario Hines. Follow me on YouTube. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go like the video. If you desire to sow into this word, first and foremost, I thank everyone who's already sold into the word. I thank God for the manifestation that are already coming. But if you desire to sow into the word, I post it. Feel free to sow into the word. You need to hold on just a little while longer. God is getting ready to work on your behalf. Follow me on YouTube at Stamario Hines. Like and share. This is Shine, Boss of Chocolate. Live. Expect the unexpected. God bless each and every one of you. I love you. I'm praying with you. And I'm praying for you. God bless you. I love you. Shalom. Shalom.